Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Pacer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, and Perfect Stitch Viewer. Tonight's webinar features our applications. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. And that wonderful team consists of Dory, Nancy R., Bob, and Debbie. I would like to introduce you to our longtime family member, Tamara Evans. Tamara is the queen of my block pacer and quilt embellisher. So take it away, Tam. Thank you, Dory. I appreciate the introduction. And I want to start off with uh, my quilt embellisher. We'll do a little bit as well with block piecer, um, the things that we can do regarding applique with it, some kind of cool functions. So let's get started right away and create a new design. First off, though, remember to download your free monthly designs in all three of your softwares. And we're actually going to be using this one in one of our little demonstrations tonight. So. Um, Let's just create a new design page. I'm going to make this my full screen size. Now, we are in My Quilt Embellisher, and there are a few applique designs in, that are built into the block library. In fact, this one right here, Honeybee, these little teardrops on there, would be appliques and very e easy to do. We can select that block, select the size. We'll just do 8 by 8 and click OK. Now, I've actually made this block, and what I would do uh, <laughs> is not sew these on by hand, because I don't do that real well. Uh, I would take and select all of my green artwork, those little teardrops, and just convert them to applique by clicking up here in the, oh, a little bit to the left of center on my icons. And there you go. Now, that's a satin stitch applique. If you want to be a little more subtle, all you have to do is come over here to the applique properties. And you know what? I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see them all very well. Now, we have many different types of applique stitches that we can use for the final finishing stitches. The first one would be a satin stitch, which is the default. Then we also have an e-stitch which is commonly referred to as a blanket stitch. And we can select the E-stitch. Now, when we do that, and I'll show you a little bit more later, we can adjust all of these different um, options. We can adjust the width of the applique stitch, the stitch length, and the inset percentage. These all default um, to the basic uh, stitches for a satin stitch. Since we're not doing a satin stitch, we want to change the default on the e-stitch to about 95%. That means it's going to snug right up there to the outline of the applique, just like these are. Now, at this point, we can save the design. If we want to quilt around this, we can do it. But that's how easy an applique is to make and change its properties. Let's try some other options with that. We also have a motif stitch, which we can select any of the ones of our motifs, which are the same as our texture stitches. If you wanted it to stand out a little bit more, you might do something, oh, I don't know, like the little circles here. And you can make them smaller. Now, you'll notice with the motif stitches, it changes the stitch length. Uh, you no longer have the applique width as an option. It simply, uh, whatever is in white, you can change, which is your stitch length, your pattern length, which right now is at 6 millimeters. If we wanted to make those really tiny circles, we could change that to 3 millimeters and click Apply. If we want to change um, our tack down offset, you see we have a placement line and a tack down line, and then this is our finishing stitch, or 
just remove our tack down altogether. We can do that. So you've got a lot of different ways that you can play with this. And as we go through different exercises with it tonight, I'll show you some variations. But this is your basic um, way to do it. Let's zoom in here a little bit and you can see you've got your placement line and your little bubbles going around it. I think that's kind of cute. And it looks much better than any handwork I'm going to do. So uh, let's move on to a new file. I, as I mentioned, in, the, in our block catalog, we have some different blocks that do have applique. One of very common appliques are the Sunbonnet Sioux, and here's um, Bob. Not the Bob that works with us, but another Bob, uh, and lots of different appliques. But of course, you can use whatever you want for an applique. If you have purchased a pattern, um, and I love applique for a couple of reasons. Number one, when I was in the business um, selling embroidery, applique had a higher perceived value than regular embroidery which is awesome because it, take me, it would take me less time, I would use less thread, less stabilizer, um, less machine time, and it was an excuse to buy fabric. Not like I needed one, but if I did, I could applicate. So I've got some different pictures in here. Let's select one. Oh, just something very simple. Um, uh, let's do... Let's do this bow tie right here. And I can click open. And now you can see that's very, very pixelated. And when I do this, I don't necessarily uh, want to, if I wanted to do it in three parts, here's the way I would do it. Um, if I want to make the knot, like the, maybe if I'm doing stripe and I want that fabric to go a different way, I could actually do this in three sections. The first thing I'm going to do is select my artwork. And I'm going to select my magic wand. I want to make this filled so you can see it. And then just click in the center so it goes in the middle of that. And if I want my red to be a different fabric, I can do that. Then simply dismiss my backdrop. Now, I do have some space between here, and these lines are a little bit wonky. But when I go to put it together as an applique, the satin stitches will cover that up. So I can select it all and convert it to an applique. And there you go. Now, a couple of things on here that are a little bothersome when I do that is that I have two sets of satin stitches right here. Okay? And I don't really want that. So let's go back and change this, um, and we can do it manually. And by that, I mean just draw it. It's a simple picture and we can simply draw it out and then do the center. So let's um, undo because remember we have unlimited undos. And I'm going to go back all the way to the beginning, bring back up my picture. And this is the way I'd want to do it. I can either use a running stitch or select the pin. Now, in and turn off my magic wand. In my quilt embellisher, all of the things that I'm showing you will also work in Perfect Embroidery Pro. The difference is, in my quilt embellisher, I either have to have a run stitch or artwork to convert to applique, because running stitches and artwork are the only things I can create from scratch. So in this case, I'm going to select a run stitch, and I'm just going to come in and draw this because it's not all that difficult. And just click. I'm clicking, holding down my uh, shift key to do the curves, and click, and click, and click, and click, and click, and then right click to set that line. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to start here and come around. It's a very simple process. I'm not even bored yet, and most of this usually bores me to tears. Okay, come around. Doop, doop, doop. And up to the edge, click, and right-click to finish. Now I have the center one left to do, 
So I can select my run stitch and I could draw that or, and actually, you know what, let's use our magic wand because now I am bored doing that. And I can just hold down my shift key to turn it red because I don't want it to outline this. I want it to use it as a single run stitch. And we'll get into that in a little bit more in a moment. Oh, I don't have a very good line. See how it didn't go all the way around? Because this is so pixelated, then I do have to draw that. So I'm going to undo, just click on my, turn off my magic wand, select my run stitch, and come in here and click around it. And we're almost done. My mother will be so proud that I did something by hand. <laughs> All right, here we go. And click there and right click to set it. Okay, now let's dismiss the backdrop. So you see I've loosely drawn this bow tie. Now, if I select it all, by doing a control A or dragging a box around it, let's, um, it would do the whole thing. But let me show you one at a time. When I convert this line to applique, you notice it doesn't go underneath the bow or the knot in the middle of the bow. And I'll do the same thing with this line and convert to applique. Now when I do the center and convert to applique, it covers those up. So now I've got my complete tie done. And I'm not going to have any overlaps or doubling of that satin stitch. So if you use a line or the artwork pin right up here, they work the same way. If you have an applique overlapping another one, you can leave it open at an edge by not selecting or by using the pin or the line and not closing in that section. Okay, let's try another one and I'll open up the new page. There's another backdrop that I've done before that I just love this one. Here's a picture of an applique. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, if I can spell, I can find it. There we go. Oh, right there. Okay, so I bring this in. Now, I do want to set my picture to the size I want my finished artwork to be. This one is defaulting to 8 inches, and perhaps I only want that to be 7 and a half. So I can fit it in my 200 by 200 hoop, and I'll apply that so I can resize my backdrop. Now, in most cases, I can do this after I've created my applique if I wanted to make it smaller to fit in a hoop. Um, but if you're changing the size dramatically, it's best to do it ahead of time. Um, you could certainly nudge it a little bit afterwards without any problem. Now, I'm just going to select my artwork again. Um, you notice I have this defaulted to fill. I do that because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, it doesn't, it isn't required to create the applique. It could be just a line and it not be filled, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to come down to the bottom and select a color. Now, I could change the color of it to match the color underneath, um, but I don't have to do that. I can make it whatever color I want, and I just right click to pick up that color. Then I want to select my magic wand because I do not want to draw manually around this whole thing. And once I have my magic wand, I do a right click and it creates the artwork for me. How simple is that? Then I right click to pick up my blue color down here at the bottom and then come up and click on my two blue pieces, then right click on the red, select each of my red uh, pieces here, and then we'll just select yellow and do that piece right there. Now, all I have to do, I can dismiss the backdrop, okay, so oops, not the artwork, the backdrop, so I'm just looking at my artwork. At this point, I could save this so I've got the artwork and take it into um, 
my block piecer and cut these or keep them in this file and, and duplicate them. And I'll show you that in a minute when we talk about artwork. But for now, I'm just going to set up how I'm going to stitch this. We will take this, actually I'm going to save it first, save as, and I'm going to call it um, F-L-E-U-R art, okay? And in the section where I need to save it, I'm going to put it in, desi in Dime Designs and click Save. Okay, so now I've got the artwork saved. The next thing I want to do is select all of the pieces and simply click on applique or convert to applique and it will take every one of those using the color of the applique convert it to stitches and it will default to the satin stitch that we saw earlier and um, include your placement line your tack down line and the finishing stitch all for you at one time my computer's a little bit slow. It's been working hard today. There we go. So there's our applique. If we look at it in 3D, you can see the stitches. Now, again, we can go in and modify those to whatever we want. Here's my, uh, this fleur -de -lis here. I maybe want to change that to um, an e-stitch or a blanket stitch and change my inset to 95%. I don't do 100% because I don't want it to be on top of the applique. I want it to be right up to the edge, kind of snuggling up with it, but not on top of it. So I will click Apply there. And if we zoom in, you can see that that is nice and close to the edge. You can also see where our placement line is just right next to the blanket stitch. And the line in the center here uh, that's in just a fraction, that is our tack down line. Now if we click on this, I could remove the tack down line or I could change the offset if I wanted to make that go in even further. I could change that to, I don't know, 40% and click apply. Oh, and it went somewhere. Let's see where that went. Maybe it's, I think 25 may be my max. We'll do 10% offset. And there it is. It's very close up there. Um, you can also, if you want to, let's go back to where we were before. I'll do an undo, undo, so you can see better. Um, if I want to make this match the color of the fabric I'm going to put in there so it doesn't show, but I do want it to tack it down inside of the applique. Here's how I do that. I come down, here's that applique stitch. Let me click the plus sign next to it and it says applique. Now with that selected, if I right click, I can break up the path. Now you see I've got run, run, applique. This run is my placement stitch. This run, you can see it highlighted just a little bit there, is my tack down stitch and then is my applique. So if I take this run and change it to a color that would match my fabric, now I've got a red tack down in there. And I think this might be a good time to see if we have any questions, Dory. Hi. Yes, we do. We have a couple of them. One of them is, if we want to duplicate what Tamara is showing later, where do we find the backdrop clip art Tamara used? Oh, well, um, <laughs> so far what I've been using is stuff that, that I have in, in my possession, except for the first um, design that I showed you, and that's from the one with the, the honeybee block, and that is in our artwork. Typically, when you get an applique, you will get a, a, an applique block, you will get a very good artwork design that you can just scan. This one in particular happens to be one that I saved as a JPEG from a quilting program. Uh, actually, it was EQ7 that lets me do all kinds of, um, it has a lot of applique blocks in it, and I thought this one was particularly lovely. So um, it was another, it's another software I own. But you can get it from anywhere. If, from a pattern that you own, 
from other software that you may own. You can draw it yourself. You could take a hand drawing, uh, the bow tie. I think I Googled bow ties and looked at images and pulled that in, which is why it wasn't very good artwork. It was very pixelated. So you can get them from numerous different places, and you can certainly draw your own. Okay. Now, Alice asked, it would be really great if the tack down line, the placement line, and the applique mm -hmm. lines were automatically different colors so the machine knows where to stop in between steps. Well, it does know where to stop automatically, and I can show you that just by showing you, let me select this, let's see, um, show you commands. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. And, you know, I was a, a, a doubting Tamara. <laughs> I would say doubting Thomas, but that's not my name. Um, and I didn't believe when I first started using this that there was actually stops in there. It's like, oh, it's all the same color. It's not going to stop. But it puts in stop commands for you. So you can use whatever color of thread you want. The stop commands will stop. Um, it, it, now, if you've got a multi-needle machine that changes colors, there are machine-specific commands that you need to use. But on any single machine, it will stop at this stop command. And if I go through a slow redraw, uh, the command will probably go away, but perhaps you can see it. Let's um, come back out here and look. So if I do a slow redraw, Okay, there's my needle change. Here's my out or my placement line, which is the exact size I want my applique to be. My finished um, fabric should be. Now, see it. Put that stop in there. Now it's coming back and doing the tack down stitch in red, and it goes all the way around. And then it changes, it goes to the blanket stitch. Now this is going to stitch around it first and then come back and do it um, just the way it works. But it does put those stops in there for us so that we can change their colors if we want to, but um, allow us to stop and uh, place the fabric over the placement line as we're going. So. Excellent. I right. have. I have one well, last one. Have you got time? Sure. Okay. How do you add the last stabilizing stitch on a non apply stitch design? And Marta is referring to using apply stitch instead of fabric, which tears very easily and requires an extra stitch on the inside oh, sure. of the applique. And that's also a very cute decorative effect. Um, ours works the same way. You can use that fabric. You can use, you know, a tearaway fabric. That's done right here. There is, uh, you can use puffy foam, um, any of that type of fabric that would fall out if you didn't have a line. And it sets a tack down line inside of the satin stitch. It does require a satin stitch at a... Uh, point, I think the number is 0.27 density, so it's very dense, so that, that fabric will tear away. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good question, Jordan. Okay. okay, now let's move on a little bit. Um, we talked before about being able to use different stitches. On this particular one, I could select uh, my blue stitches, and I could change those to a motif stitch. And again, I can use any of my different motif stitches. I'm going to make them a little prickly. Let's see. I'll do, let's do this one. Maybe they're thorny berries. And apply. Now, when I look at that close, that's okay. But I really think I'd like to make it a little more subtle. And all I need to do is change my pattern length. You see, I have stitch length and pattern length. Just like when I'm filling an area with texture stitches or advanced stipple stitches, I can set my pattern length and stitch length, or my pattern length, and here I can also set my stitch length to a smaller stitch. Maybe I'll make these 3.5 to match the stitch length. And there you go. Now, if you want to do raw edge applique, you could certainly take 
this same little design and change your tack down line to offset at zero percent. So it will stitch down a placement line, you lay down your fabric, it'll stitch down the tack down line, and then if you want to trim it while it's in the hoop, you can. If not, you can trim it after it's done. So that's another option. All right, let's look up another, uh, let's open up a new page, and look at a little bit different type of thing. I want to explain this one concept to you all. And this is a design that I don't remember exactly where I got it, but I thought it was lovely, this little damask design. And I want to talk to you about outlining and about red work a little bit, because it does apply to applique. If I took this and selected just the outline here, for example, um, it's a backdrop. You can see my, my grid goes over the top of it. It's sitting behind. It's artwork that I can play with. Now, if I select that, let's go up to do a run stitch, and I will select my magic wand. Actually, let's do artwork and select my magic wand, and I click on the little red right there with my wand being blue, here's what happens. Let's dismiss the backdrop and zoom in on this. It's actually, whoops, hang on. <laughs> I didn't bring my mouse with me, so I have to play with my, let's, um, let me undo that. Well, oops. Okay. So it would give me just the outline of that. If I want to do both pieces of it, then the best way to do that is bring back up your oops, bring back up your picture, and instead of selecting the outline and picking both of them and playing with all of that, just select the red in the center and click on it, or the pink, the lighter color. Then once I dismiss my backdrop. I can take, sorry, and convert that to applique. And it will make that whole thing into an applique. Now this one's going to be a little, um, it'll be about six inches wide and default to a satin stitch. So you might want to change those stitches. But you can do that with any fill and just click the filled artwork and convert it to applique. It's taking a little while. Okay, there we go. And there you go. It did an applique on that. Now, let me show you a different type of uh, design. Go to the backdrop tool again. And these are just very simple flowers that really anyone could draw themselves. Uh, right. And they'd make an adorable applique, these posies, on a little girl's outfit. Now, if I do that same type of thing, select my artwork, select my magic wand, and this time I click on the black. You see my magic wand is blue. Let me show you what happens. It makes that a fill stitch. Okay, That's not what I want. I want it to be, because when I go to convert that to applique, let's see what happens. And zoom in on 3D. Oops. It makes it too big for me. If I simply, it's actually doing two of them on each side, so you want to do it as a line. I know this is getting confusing, but if I don't know if you can see, it actually is going on either side of that line. So what I want to do in this case, instead of using, and I'm trying to keep you from making this mistake, because here, if we do a slow redraw, you'll be able to see it better. What happens here, if I dismiss my backdrop, it puts down my, here we go, now you can see the whole thing. It puts down my placement stitch, my tack down, and then it comes back in twice 
with the satin stitch. Because it's doing it on either side of that line instead of using that as a single line. Let me show you how to avoid that type of thing. If I go to, um, let's undo, undo, okay, bring the picture back up. Now, when I do that, what I'd rather do is either use a run stitch or I could use the pin option, click on my magic wand, and then with my magic wand, um, hold the shift key down to make it red, it will do a single line almost does a single line. That's not a very good artwork, is it? Let's do this one. Hold my shift key down. Um, hang on there just one second. Now let's zoom out. Dismiss the backdrop. Oh, it did all of them for me because I did the backdrop. Okay, hang on just a second, guys. My fingers are being fat today. All right, let's do this. Bring up the backdrop. I'm making this more complicated than it is. I'm going to select my run stitch or my artwork pin. Click on the magic wand. Hold it down while it's red and select this flower. Dismiss the backdrop and now I just have a single one around that. I may need to close that gap with this artwork, but then when I convert it to an applique, it doesn't do it twice. It just does it once. All right. Um, if I want to do, let's do that in 3D, and actually I'll show you how to close that. Let's come back in here with the stitch and zoom in where that is. And I'm just, oops, let's shape, take it off of 3D so I can see it. I'll move the stop out of the way, and I just need to move this over, right click, um, and see where I am, and move this one over, whoops, under here. So I can move these points, and now that's put together. Okay, so here's my flower satin stitch. And then, if I want to do the one in the center, I would do the same thing. Just click on my run stitch. I've got my magic wand selected. Do a shift key and click. Oops. Dismiss the backdrop. Hmm. It doesn't like that one. I had no trouble doing this one earlier. Uh, let's click that again. Well, you know what? Sometimes artwork just doesn't agree with this. We could also come in and click on uh, artwork and the magic wand and click in the center here so that it fills it. And then, uh, oops, select that and convert it to applique, just like that. Now, that's another option. If I do this, let's go back to the beginning here without any designs. I could always come in if I just want to do that flower and click on artwork and a fill, dismiss my backdrop, and convert this to applique. Select it, convert to applique. Now, it's done both the hole in the center for me and the outside. Let's change this to a blanket stitch. Change our inset to 95 and click Apply. And audition some fabric in it. I'm going to select a fabric. Let's do something that contrasts a little bit and click OK. Now, you see we got a problem. When I do that as one unit with the hole in it, then it wants to do this on the inside as well, but it's no problem. We just click Adjust Holes. If you ever have a hole in anything, click Adjust Holes, and it will turn it the other way around so that it will applique on both sides. If I was going to do another fabric in there, then I would leave it the way it was. So that's another option. Now, let's talk. Um, do we have questions right now, Dory? 
before we go to cutting? Oops. I'm sorry, I had myself muted. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no, the only other thing that we've got is for a little later, and we're going to talk about the files save as for mm -hmm. the scan and cut for oh, the okay. yeah, silhouette. I'm ready to do that. Yes, yes ma'am. That's what I've got. Okay, good. Let's do that. Um, now, I'm going to open up a new file. And um, remember the one that we had here before. We did doo -doo -doo -doo, the FLIR starts with an F. Oh, I need to refresh my contents. Now we can scroll down. If I move this out of my way. Well, oh, it's in here. There it is, our FLIR art. Now let's bring that one back in. Now at this point, I could have um, saved this with the design as well, with the applique, and have it all in one folder or one file. Uh, but this one's by itself. If you want to save these in a format to cut out on a scan and cut or a silhouette, anything like that, then we need to do File, Export, Artwork. This is where in this program it gives you the option to save it as an SVG, um, an FCM, which are scan and cut, and then other artwork options, a plotter file or an AutoCAD file or a W Illustrator, um, any of those. Now, so I could save it as an SVG or an FCM. My other option in this program is to do File, Save As, and in my Save As, I can also save this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, no, see, you notice I can't save it as any other artwork in here. But what I can do, if I'm going to print out um, the pattern on, say, um, an applique product or on paper so I can cut out my fabric ahead of time or whatever just to save the pattern, I can do, click on my template, print preview, and in that, right now, of course, you see nothing because my settings don't include artwork. What I want to do is print it at actual size. I don't want crosshairs in it because this isn't for design placement. I don't need any of this. I just want actual size and artwork. And now I could print this out on um, any one of those applique kind of papers. I can run it through my printer. I could print it on a regular printer and then trace it on uh, applique product like applique fuse and fix or any of those that are fusible, printable, or on paper. So you've got your pattern. And I may use this and just roughly cut around that, however, of the fabric, just to make sure it'll fit. However, with this kind of design, I don't want to trim this in my hoop, which is why I like a product like Applique Fuse and Fix, that you can run through the printer, you can fuse it to the back of your fabric, trim it out exactly. Then um, when you're ready to place the fabric on your applique, it will show you after you've printed, after you've, I'm sorry, stitched your placement line, you can fit that applique fabric perfectly on there. It's very sticky. And then do your cat down line and your stitch. If you're going to do a satin stitch, I highly recommend. And really for most anything, um, if you really want your stitches to look nice, I would put a water soluble topper over it. It really just adds. A great deal to your stitches that make them look beautiful. And that's how I would cut it with my quilt embellisher or prepare my fabric. Now, if I have my block piecer, I can come in here to the library and pull out that same file. Here it is. We saved it. It's going to be the exact right size. And I can take that, this right here, and send it to my cutter by selecting it. Go to, oops, I've got to select a larger hoop. 
let's go to my scan and cut 12 by 12 mat and it will do each different color for me and add a seam allowance. In this case, I don't want a seam allowance. So what I would do is come down here to where it says seam allowance and change that to zero and click apply. Now it will cut it out the exact same size that I need for my applique. And that would be in my, my scan and cut or my, um, or my silhouette either one, because I don't want that excess seam allowance. If you want to make it just a little over the placement line so you're sure you're covered, you can do that, because down here at the bottom, you can change that seam allowance to anything you want. If I want it to be a tenth of an inch, I can apply that. And you see there I've got that very small whoops, um, seam allowance around there whatever you want it to be. If I was using metric on my ruler, it would show me that in millimeters, um, but here I'm doing inches. I could also tell it that I want four repeats of this. I'm going to do four of these. It's going to make a beautiful design going around. I'll click four and apply. Now I get all of my little blue dots cut out in one pass, all of my red, all of my yellow, and it doesn't, it wants to cut each of those out individually. I might even change that to my 12 by 24 inch mat. So then on those two, I just have to make two passes, or on that particular one. So it cuts it out for you perfectly with precision. You're done in no time. And you can create your, your artwork in my block piecer, you just cannot create the applique stitches. You can create anything and cut it out. So if you're going to do handwork and you want to cut out uh, templates or you want to cut out the fabric, you can do that in my block piecer as well. So does that answer your question, Dory? I'm going to have to stop using this mute button. Yes, it does. Thank you. Very well put. Okay. Good, good. All right. Now, I want to show you a, a fun little project because I love some of the designs we had this month. I'm going back over to my quilt embellisher, and let's close out of our print view, open a new page, and in our files this month, uh, our free designs in February, and scroll down, we have these lovely, lacy-looking designs. Now, first thing I'm going to do is change the color so you can see this better. Isn't this gorgeous? This is the one that goes with my block piecer. And if you have quilt embellisher, I mean, this is the one that goes with quilt embellisher. If you have block piecer and PEP, then you have another one of these as well. If we look at it in 3D view, this is beautiful. I would love to make this an applique, but you know what? I've already got a satin stitch around it. I don't want to add another one. So let me show you how to cheat a little. I'm going to select the design. I'm going to right click and say create an outline. But instead of this outline going to the outside a certain amount, I want it to go to the inside. But I don't know how far, so we'll cancel that and select our measurement tool, and I want to measure how wide the satin stitch is. Well, first of all, I look at this design, and it's really pretty small, so I want to make it more substantial. To start off with, I'll resize it. We'll make it 5 inches and apply. All right, now center origin. Then I'm going to measure how wide the satin stitch is. And it says it's 0.1918 inches. Okay, so now when I right click, right click and create an outline, half of 1918 would be about 0 0.08 or 0 0.09. And I want it to go to the inside with just one repeat. Now when we do this, it creates an artwork outline. And as you can see, it did it in blue. You can see it right here going around this. Maybe better if we take it off of 3D. I'm going to go to my sequence view. And I want to 
select that, convert it to applique. Now I've got that satin stitch going over the top of the other stitches. I don't want that look. Even if it was in the same color, it would be too heavy. So I'm going to select the applique again, right here, and right-click, break up path. Now, when I do the plus sign over here in the sequence view to expand that, if I click on the applique, that is just the satin stitch. And I'm going to right-click and delete it. Now, what I have is a run stitch and a tack down stitch. Here's my outline stitch or the placement stitch for my fabric, and here's my tack down. So when I stitch this, I'm going to take this and send it to the front so it stitches first. Send it to the back so it stitches first. Okay, now watch the sequence here up here in slow redraw. I'm going to click and here's my placement line so I can lay down my fabric. There's my tack down line. And then it finishes stitching the whole design on top of the fabric that I just put down. Isn't that lovely? We could even audition fabric for this. If I select my first run, which is the placement line, go to my fabric selection, and let's pick, um, hmm, uh, something light. We can, ooh, that's pretty. Let's do that. And click OK. Now I've got that fabric under that medallion and it looks gorgeous. If I want to put this on a quilt block, I mean that would be beautiful on a handbag, on um, a pillowcase, anything, it doesn't have to be quilted. But if I did want to quilt it, then I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to select the size of my finished block here with the rectangle, hold down my shift key, and drag a square. Then change my square. Oh, <laughs> my control key is what gets it exact here. Let's make this just 7 inches by 7 inches, apply, I can send that to the back so that it's under my design. I'm going to select everything by doing a control A and center that in the middle of that fabric or background. Okay. Now, I want to stipple around this. I want to make this a beautiful applique on some fabric and I want quilting going around it, I again select my design, do a right click, and create another outline. But this time I want it to go outside and I'm just going to use the default, although I could select whatever I want. And it creates an artwork outline for me. So I have artwork here and artwork here. And I'm going to select both of them and combine them. Do you see what they did? It cut a hole in the background. Now I can select this and convert it to stippling and stitch a block. Now, I don't know how many of you watched Eileen's blog on Saturday, but I love, absolutely love this new stipple feature where None of the lines are broken and it doesn't create an outline around any of it. If I wanted an outline or a border, I could do that just by right clicking and say create border and it would stitch a run stitch border for me, but I don't think I want that. I think I'll just undo that and leave it just the way it is. Wow. Isn't that simple? Yeah, isn't that cute? I love that. Now, I want you to know I actually did this particular block, but I uh -huh. did it with a satin. Oh. I did it with silk and satin within the whole um, block. And then I went ahead, trimmed it after I did a um, stay stitch all the way around. I trimmed mm -hmm. it. I mounted it onto a piece of wet and gone. 
And then mm-hmm. I went ahead and did the uh, final zigzag stitch around it, trimmed it, or I should say moistened all the edges, uh-huh. not really trimmed it. And then I went ahead and mounted it in a frame. It was absolutely breathtaking. Oh, that's gorgeous. You know, without the quilting around it, that would even be a beautiful ornament, you know, yeah. with yes. the wet and gone or a water-soluble fiber type stabilizer in it. Absolutely. They're just beautiful. And you could do that with any design. Um, here's a couple of other ideas that you could do. Open up a new file. In my backdrops here, and I can tell you exactly where I got this one, uh, um, I have a letter that I did in Word with one of my, since we don't have um, true type text capability in here, I saved it as a JPEG in PEP, or I could simply go into um, Word and make a great big letter on a page and save that as a JPEG or a BMTP and bring it up and here's my backdrop. Okay, very simple, very easy. I can then select my artwork tool, my magic wand, click on it so it creates the outline, then simply convert to applique. That easy. I love doing applique letters. They're, they're fun, they're easy, they make great gifts. Um, you could even come inside of this when you've got the artwork. Let's go back and duplicate that. I'm going to right click and copy, right click and paste. Now I'm just going to turn, so I actually, you see over here on the right, I've got two different artwork elements. The, the top one is selected. I'm going to convert it to applique. Then I have one underneath it that I could convert to stitches. I could make that into a shape echo or, ooh, I love shape echo, or a contour stitch. Um, let's do a circle in there. And I could actually put stitches inside of my applique. Awesome. And if I want to move the center of that circle somewhere else, I simply click my reshape tool and move it and click again. And then I've got that look. Or I could do stipple, I could do any one of my fills. So you can really make some creative things with applique and my quilt embellisher. Cut it out with my block piecer. One more thing before I leave this one, I want to show you when you select it because we get this question frequently. You see here I've got these um, corners. I'm going to change my corner type to extended from square, and let's see what happens. Well, not a lot on that one because my corners weren't very narrow. But if we go back, what it does, there is an activation link, and I don't think any of these Maybe none of these angles. Oh, the center one would have been. Minus. Plus two. Okay. So it will extend those corners on down based on, on the angle of your satin stitch. Very um, good. Okay. Other questions? We do have one really important question is, how big can you stretch out a design before you have distorted it beyond use? <laughs> you know, that is the $64 million question. Um, certain things are very um, sensitive, flexible, and other things are very sensitive. The first thing I recommend to people, it used to be that, that the rule of thumb was no more than 20% up or down. However, this design right here that's all satin stitches, I can do it quite large. We have um, some options in our tools, general options, and let's see. That mm-hmm. well, you know what? 
you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of with um, uh, Perfect Embroidery Pro. Yes. It will split up satin stitches longer than a certain width. If I was to get these over seven inches, let me show you what happens. Let me get rid of that backdrop. Let's explode this out. Oops, not the fabric. Get rid of that. Let's make the design really big. Click on the red and change the size. Let's make it just really crazy big. I'm going to do it 12 inches and apply. Now, you'll see, actually this one will go ahead and do it because um, even though these stitches are longer than what I'd recommend, that's, you know, almost a half an inch on a satin stitch. It will do it in this one. In PEP, so be careful because you can get them really big. In, in Perfect Embroidery Pro, it will split those up for you. If I was going to do this really big and another advantage of having all the software, um, I would bring this up in Perfect Embroidery Pro and then it would uh, put in stitches for me that blend that satin stitch. So it looks like a satin stitch, but it staggers needle drops in here. So it's stronger and it's not going to get snagged easily like this one would, um, certainly with those largest stitches in there. So um, rule of thumb, that and the level of detail. You know, if you're doing um, an applique where you've got no veins on a leaf and you make it, you know, the original applique was three quarters of an inch and you make that five inches, that's going to be a really boring leaf because there's no veins, there's no character, there's no level of detail to it. I often think about eyelashes. If a design has eyelashes, you don't want to make it really small or you're just going to have stitches that stitch on top of each other right there and you're going to have problems. They're too close together. If you make a very small design with a face, you know, with no eyelashes really big, it's going to look very bland and flat because it won't have enough detail. So, does that answer your question? It, good question. Uh, that was a really good question. Thank you so much and again, thank you for coming and sharing with us tonight. I appreciate it, and I'm sure all these other people appreciate it. We're getting lots of wonderful webinars, and thank yous. Uh, well, thank you all. And I, and hope I look forward to seeing you all next month. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ha Good night, everybody. Be inspired.